already expected to love Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate before I started playing it. I'd loved every game prior in the series, and played them for a grand total of 700 hours! Over a month's worth of playtime! But I didn't expect to add another hefty amount of time to that already large number. Seriously, after 700 hours of playtime, I doubted that they could add much more that would keep me hooked for a large amount of time. Boy was I wrong. I've played this game for 50 hours over the past 7 days, and I feel like I've only scratched the surface. The game starts off with a gorgeous cinematic subtly showing off a bunch of new features in the game. The advanced mobility, returning monsters, new monsters, new weapons, feline comrades, feline abilities, layered areas, it's a really cool cinematic. However, it is not an accurate representation of the game's actual graphics, which, I'll fully admit, aren't the best. 3 Ultimate looked much better. Thankfully, I'm not stupid enough to judge a game by its graphics, and quite frankly, this game is good enough that it doesn't need good graphics. After the cinematic, you then move on to your character creation, which isn't the best I've seen, but certainly not the worst either. This game improves on the previous entries by actually allowing you to have a substantial amount of clothing on before gaining armor, as well as additional features and hairstyles, including an avro. You then move on to... Mm. Oh my god, you can customize your felines! This made me so happy to see. I love felines. I made mine blue and named him Ranulf. And we set out on our epic adventure. With previous entries in the Monster Hunter franchise, you started out at the village, given a rundown of what you need to do, and set off to hunt some weak herbivores, slowly easing you into the gameplay. This time, however, the game decides to start you off with a taste of what is to come. No way! Are we starting on the Gen Morang battle? Oh, sweet. Oh, Deluxe. You know what that means? Where is it? There it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's not a Gen Moran. Holy crap! That looks awesome! Oh my god, that's awesome! It's like the Gen Moran, but spikier. I love it. This is so epic! This is the perfect way to start a game! Best intro ever! Instead of a slow and steady start like before, this game tells you, guess what? If you get strong enough, you get to fight things like this! So you repel the new Daren Moran, get into the town, and receive your weapons and armor. There are a grand total of 14 different weapon classes in this game, two of which are completely new to the series with dozens of variants in each class. I'll touch on the returning ones briefly, then talk in depth about the new ones. The Great Sword is a giant sword that gives Cloud Strife's Buster Sword a run for its money in terms of size. It's one of the slowest weapons in the game, slowing your hunter to a crawl, but it hits like a truck, and can be charged up for a devastating attack. It's also so big that you can use it as a shield to block enemy attacks. The Long Sword is a much thinner version of the Great Sword, sacrificing strength for speed, this sword has a combo meter that you fill by hitting enemies, which allows you to use an extremely fast, powerful combo. If you land the final hit of said combo, your sword will start to glow, empowering your weapon with each successful combo you hit. The sword and shield is the most practical weapon in the game, and probably the most noob-friendly as well. The weapon's small size allows you to quickly dodge around, leaping, blocking, and slashing. If you are new to the series, I recommend you start with this weapon. The dual swords is exactly what it sounds like, you hold two swords instead of one. Or axes, chainsaws, even kicking utensils depending on your weapon. This is easily the fastest weapon in the game, shredding monsters to bits with its quick and devastating combos. You can enter a demon mode that makes your attacks, combos, and dodges even faster at the cost of your stamina draining. If you manage to fill up a gaging demon mode, you will hit ARC DEMON MODE, which combines the best features of both demon mode and regular mode. The hammer is, well, a hammer. A gigantic blunt object with devastating power. The hammer hits so hard that it drains a monster's stamina with each hit. It can even knock it out if you hit it in the head enough times. You can also charge up a variety of moves, including a spinning attack that is both dangerous and hilarious. Its biggest downside, other than leaving you wide open defensively, is that it can't cut tails, limiting the materials you can get from hunts. The hunting horn is absolutely hilarious. You are bashing the monsters with a musical instrument. 
Like the hammer, this thing hits hard and can knock monsters out. But unlike the hammer, this weapon can play songs that can bluff yourself and your allies. These songs range anywhere from elemental resistances, negating stamina use, or healing. I love pairing up the negate stamina with other weapons. If you give a dual sword user that ability, it allows for permanent demon mode. Play with three other dual sword users as a hunting horn hunter, will completely obliterate any and all monsters in your path. The lance is a very cumbersome weapon, but also the most defensive one. With a ridiculously good reach and a gigantic shield, the lance allows you to whittle away a monster's health while remaining relatively safe. It's also one of the slowest weapons. If you run into a monster with an unblockable attack, you're in a lot of trouble if you can't get out of the way fast enough. The gun lance is very similar to the lance with one obvious difference. It doubles as a short range gun. The gun lance allows you to output massive amounts of damage by firing bolts alongside your attacks, as well as charging up a devastating explosion called Wyvern Fire. The biggest downside in comparison to the lance is that the weapon's sharpness plummets with every shot you make. The switch axe is a giant weapon that can morph between a sword and an axe, with long reach and lots of infinite combos. In axe mode, you continuously swing your axe back and forth until you run out of stamina, dealing massive damage, while in sword mode you can swing very quickly and do a charge stab that ends in an enormous explosion. Just be careful, this weapon has such a long reach that you can send your fellow hunters flying very easily. Light bow guns, heavy bow guns, and bows are weapons that differ from the rest. They fall into a separate category of weapons. While all the others are Blade Master weapons, these are known as Gunna weapons, requiring a separate set of armor to use them. They can use a variety of different ammo to deal damage to monsters, allowing you to hit monsters from a distance. I prefer to use these weapons in multiplayer mode, supporting other hunters from afar. And the final two weapons, the ones introduced in this game, are the Charge Blade and the Insect Glaive, and they are easily some of the best weapons in the entire series. The Charge Blade, at first glance, just seemed like a slightly larger, slightly slower sword and shield. I thought that was a bit lame and disappointing, so I decided not to use it at first, opting instead for the Insect Glaive. But when I finally got back around to it and actually used it, holy crap this thing is amazing! It's just a simple sword and shield at first, yes, but as you attack enemies, you will eventually press X and R at the same time, and to my utter surprise, it seamlessly morphed into a switch axe which you can then use to perform a ridiculously powerful and flashy explosive slashy attack of doom. I love this weapon because of how effortlessly it swaps between sword and axe forms. You can swap in between combos constantly doing damage. It's got such fluid motion, I love watching it being used. But it pales in comparison to the other new weapon in this game. The Insect Glaive is a giant bow staff that is longer than your hunter is tall. One end is tipped with a sharp blade, and the other is tipped with a... You know what? I'm not entirely sure. Pheromone shooter? Something like that? In addition to that, you get a kinsect that latches onto your arm that you can send out to attack monsters by using the pheromone end of the staff. The kinsect will steal the monster's essence when it hits one, and returns to you with that essence, powering you up. You can even use the staff to pull vault, which is extremely useful for attacking and dodging, which segues nicely into something that was added for every weapon type in this game. Jump attacks! Only took 4 entries to the series to do it, but hunters have finally found out how to properly jump and attack at the same time. This may not seem like much, but these attacks come with an added bonus. If you hit the monster with them enough, you will jump onto its back and then start repeatedly stabbing it with your hunting knives. If you stab it enough without it throwing you off, you'll knock it over and leave it stunned for a good chunk of time. This adds in a new layer of strategy to the game, trying to position the monster so you can pull off a jump attack. This is also where the insect glaive shines, as it can do a jump attack at any time. So that's all the weapons. What about the armor? How much armor does this game have? All of it. It has all of the armor. I'm not even going to bother to count. There are so many possible armor combinations in this game, with several hundred if not thousand sets of armor to choose from. Have you absorbed all that information yet? Too much? Well, too bad. There's more! There are dozens of skills in this game. Each armor set has different ones. You can fit your armor and weapons with gems to alter those skills. There are hundreds of items in this game. Some you use for crafting, some you use for healing or buffing yourself, some for battling, some just don't do anything at all. But you better know what they all do, because you'll need a lot of them. You can hire felines to help you, each of which have different stats and abilities, and you can outfit them with different kinds of equipment as well. There are hundreds of quests in this game that you can complete that give you different kinds of rewards and unlock new quests, and that's before you even go online! Whew! 
Why am I telling you all this in quick succession? Because Monster Hunter is a complicated game. There is so much to do in this game, and so much you need to learn to do it, that it can seem daunting to a beginner. This game is not a casual game. It takes time and skill to play. But if you're willing to put in that time and effort, this is one of the best games you will ever play. With all of that finally out of the way, let's continue. After being bombarded with information, you finally exit your house and meet the people you'll be spending the rest of the game story with. The story has never been a big part of Monster Hunter games, and it still really isn't, but in this one you at least get some sense of plot progressions more than, Big monstrous trouble, go kill it! You are part of a caravan, acting as the muscle of the group, traveling between a variety of cities helping the people you meet. Then there's the caravan master, a guy with a bird and a really cool hat, the blacksmith, who forges weapons and armor, who is known only as the man. Seriously, that's his name. Then there's the man's assistant, an adorable little girl that was raised by dwarves and is a surprisingly proficient blacksmith. A feline cook, who makes you meals that can buff you in battle. A really old merchant that will duplicate and trade items for you. A quest giver girl, who gives you quests and advice. Your own personal feline that will accompany you on quests. A housekeeper feline that helps you get DLC. And a pet pig whose only purpose is to be absolutely adorable. I love this pig. You can dress him up, cuddle with him, and name him whatever you want. I named mine Ridley. Seemed fitting. So you start out on the quests, which are extremely simple at first. Gathering mushrooms, slaying bugs, but you gradually build up to bigger and stronger monsters. After doing a few of the easy quests, you get to hunt your first boss type monster, a new monster called the Celtus. Monster Hunter 4 added a ton of new monsters, 26 new ones in total. Along with a slew of returning monsters, this brings the number of monsters in this game to a grand total of 98 different monsters to fight, 75 of which are boss monsters. That's insane! And the ones they add are really creative. But before I show them, seeing the monsters for the first time is part of what makes Monster Hunter so enjoyable for me. So if you want to get this game and avoid spoilers, here's an annotation to skip past the part where I show the new and returning monsters. I'm not gonna click it? You good? Okay then. First off, the aforementioned Celtus is the first of the new bug bosses type in this game. Monster Hunter's always had giant bugs, but they've never been boss monsters until now. There's the Celtus, a giant ear rigged thing called the Queen Celtus, and then there's Scylla. Hello? Nursilla? Hello? Hello? Oh no, you're a spider. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I hate spiders so much. Please move, please move, please move, please move, please move. Yeah. It's a spider. I hate spiders. There is also a new amphibian class of monster, which adds two new bosses. The Tetsukabra, a tusk toad-like creature that likes to smash rocks, and the Zamtrios. Hello, felines. Is that... Is that a shark fin? That's totally a shark fin. Is this an ice shark? Interesting. Whoa! You look awesome! Whoa! <laughs> I love feline so much. <laughs> and I'm gonna get killed. A super badass, four-legged shark creature that looks extremely awesome and scary until it 
puffs up like a puffer fish and becomes the dumbest and funniest looking monster I've ever seen. There are also several new monsters in existing classes of bosses, like the new Kachawacha. Hi there. Aww, it's Blimp- Ew! I was gonna say, he's playing peekaboo with me, I didn't want to kill him, but then you sneezed on me. The Darwin Moron, which is the new and improved cousin of the Gen Moron, and the Magala Elder Dragons, one of my favorite additions in this game. But the best new addition, at least for me, is the new snake type boss, Najarala. Hello, Najarala. Najarala. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Where are you? Whoa! What the? <gasps> no way! Uh, it's got arms. It's not entirely a snake, but it's uh, I just told. Oh my gosh! I've won one decent monster hunter. This is awesome. Yes. I love snakes. Best new monster by far. In addition to the new monsters, there are several new subspecies to existing monsters. I haven't seen any myself. I haven't gotten far enough in the game to see the new ones, but I know the Brachidios got a new one, the Kirin got one, and that the Tigris got another one. Monster Hunter's progression system is different from most other video games. Instead of leveling up and getting better stats, you instead hunt stronger monsters, and make weapons and armor out of those monsters, which allows you to hunt even stronger monsters. This is quite possibly my favorite progression system in any video game ever, because it relies almost entirely on your own personal skill and accomplishment. Hunting the same monster over and over can become a bit of a chore if you're trying to create a certain piece of equipment, but you can't get that certain rare drop. Stupid Raffalo's plates. But the battles against the monsters are so action-packed that the annoyance is only really felt in between hunts. As for the hunts themselves, Monster Hunter has always been a game about precise, intense battles and this game is no exception. The new areas in the game are more varied in terms of terrain levels due to the new jump attacks and improved climbing. It allows for more strategies for both you and the monsters. Even if you are a veteran to this series, the multi-level areas give you and the monsters plenty of new ways of attacking, making even the older monsters feel fresh and unique. So far, I've only talked about the offline modes of Monster Hunter, but this game also has a fantastic online service. You can team up with up to three friends, locally or not, to hunt giant monsters. The connection, at least with my experiences, is flawless. I haven't had any lag whatsoever. Like every Monster Hunter game, I'm sure that you can run into monsters online that you can't encounter elsewhere, and I'm extremely excited to see what those monsters are. The final thing I have to talk about are the feline comrades. Along with your personal companion, you have the ability to hire from a variety of other felines to tag along with you on your quest. You can also play a variety of mini games with them. You can have a ton of different felines. You start out with the ability to have up to 20, but you can raise that number through quests. As of right now, I have 19 felines, and their names are... Ranulf, Biggles, Kit Kat, Zidane, Neptup, Nueve, Humphrey, Vittles, Red Pal, Aeolos, Dieth, Pubagoo, Draco, Jacques, Namira, Bobby, Majora, Rayman, and Zeratul. That's everything I want to talk about in the game, but before I give you my verdict, here are several specific things that I really like and dislike about the game. The Quest Giver Girl affectionately refers to you as Doodle. It is quite possibly the cutest pet name I have ever heard. I have to fight off the urge to smile every time I hear it. The first time you encounter the Gormagala is epic. It's a pity you already know it's in the game due to its appearing in the intro. I love how the introductions and max for the monsters actually have them interacting with your hunter. The feline special moves are awesome. They will team up and use a special move, which could be a horn duet that will heal and increase your max health, a flying bomb, where the felines will jump onto a rocket and fly into the monster's face, and my personal favorite, the Wrath of Meow, a mobile tank that will repeatedly shoot at the monster. One of the new areas, the Volcanic Hollow, 
is just a fiery reskin of another area, the Sunken Hollow. I'm a bit disappointed they didn't make a unique fire area. With all the new mechanics they've added, that could have been really cool. That said, the new locations are amazing. In particular, the area Heaven's Mount feels like you are battling on a floating island in the sky, with crumbling rocks constantly falling past you from the mountain peaks above. I hate most of the returning monsters in this game. I know that Kieran is in this game. I haven't been able to fight it yet, but I'm dying to try. You can play soccer with Conchus, the new bug monsters. And lastly, there is DLC in this game. And it's awesome! New quests, new armor, new weapons, new feline equipment, and it's all themed after stuff from different video game series. I can dress up as Link and use the Master Sword. I can put my feeling in Mario's clothes. There's community designed content like the adorably hilarious Emperor's Speech Hunting Hammer. There's going to be featured Sonic DLC, Mega Man DLC, Animal Crossing, Street Fighter, Devil May Cry, and Metroid! And best of all, it is all free. I love this game. I truly do. If I had a 3DS capture card, I'd be let's playing it right now on my other channel. It is not a game made for casual gamers, but I even recommend for casual gamers to at least try it out. This is a must-have title on the 3DS. Heck, even if you don't have a 3DS, this game is worth buying one for. It's that good. I've put over 50 hours into the game, and I've only scratched the surface of what it can offer. If you try and actually enjoy this game, you will have a very difficult time putting it down. Seriously, there's a reason this video took so long to make. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to see my future content. It's super easy and it helps my channel grow. If you didn't like it, that's okay. You just have terrible taste in video game- <clears throat> <clears throat> I mean, I fully accept and respect your opinions. Please dislike, leave a hateful remark in the comments, and subscribe to hate my future videos as well. If you want to see some of my other videos, click one of the annotations. There's another one of my reviews for the game Evolve, which could take some lessons in DLC from Monster Hunter 4, just saying. And here's my top 10 favorite monsters of the Monster Hunter series. Follow me on Twitter if you want, or check out my gameplay channel, where I'm playing through Fire Emblem Blaze and Sword and a Pokemon Emerald Nuzlocke. And that's everything. Thank you all for watching. I hope you are enjoying life. There's more stuff coming soon, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!